The goal of this video is to identify relevant sulci and gyri in each lobe visible from the lateral perspective. We start in the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe begins at the anterior or frontal pole and ends posteriorly at the central sulcus. First, let us show central sulcus and the precentral gyrus is immediately anterior to it, running vertically. Further anteriorly, the precentral sulcus is next, running also in the vertical direction. Therefore, the precentral gyrus is between the central and the precentral sulci. In addition, there are three horizontally oriented gyri all anterior to precentral sulcus. Now watch the yellow pin move through these gyri, the superior, the middle, and the inferior frontal gyrus. Let us look at the temporal lobe very quickly from the lateral perspective. As we discussed earlier, the temporal lobe is inferior to lateral cerebral fissure and uh, anterior to preoccipital notch. Here we find three horizontally oriented gyri, the superior, the middle, and the inferior temporal gyrus, noting that the inferior temporal gyrus transitions inferomedially into the ventral surface as well. We now move to the most relevant features of parietal lobe visible on the lateral surface. As noted previously, we cross into parietal lobe by moving posterior to central sulcus which is the boundary between the frontal and the parietal lobe. In the parietal lobe, oriented vertically, the post-central sulcus is behind the central sulcus. Therefore, the post-central gyrus of parietal lobe is formed between the central and post-central sulci labeled by the pink pen here. We now identify the intraparietal or interparietal sulcus. The intraparietal sulcus is running perpendicular to postcentral sulcus but in the posterior direction, marked by the yellow pen, will serve as a landmark to separate the superior parietal lobule above it from the inferior parietal lobule below it. And then we can turn our attention to the components of the inferior parietal lobule. We find two gyri here, the supramarginal and the angular gyri. To localize the supramarginal gyrus, one should follow the lateral cerebral fissure into its termination and cross over to parietal lobe, look for the upturned end of it, that is supramarginal gyrus. And in a similar fashion, to find the angular gyrus, one should follow the superior temporal gyrus and then cross over to parietal lobe and look for the horseshoe-shaped gyrus there. In this specimen, to sum up, the intraparietal sulcus is labeled with the yellow pin. The supramarginal gyrus is marked by the pink pin and the angular gyrus is marked by the purple pin. I have added a group of three pink pins 
to the occipital area. This region is occupied by the so-called lateral occipital gyri that are variable and rather inconsistent. As you can see here, making up the lateral surface of occipital lobe. At this time, I would like to give you a three-dimensional view by turning the specimen toward the dorsal perspective, showing you with the yellow pen intraparietal sulcus, superior parietal lobule would be above it, and now the inferior parietal lobule underneath it, and finally the group of pens in occipital lobe marking lateral occipital gyri. We slowly turn the specimen back to lateral view to finish up the demonstration of lobes on the lateral surface.